Have you ever been in a situation where there's some error that occurs at your customer's site? And then as a result of that, some other system fails and then total chaos ensues, everything crashes, including the main service that the customer is using. And then you're scrambling and trying to figure out what happens, trying to reproduce the issue, basically losing the whole day trying to solve the problem. The reason that happened is because you probably didn't apply the fail fast principle. Today I'm going to talk about what the fail fast principle is and how you can apply it to your code. Now fail fast is just one principle of software design. If you want to learn more about software design principles, check out my software design course at iron.codes slash mindset. I want to start by showing the setup of the code example. So we have a main file here, which is a backend using fast API. That's what we see right here. So there's a couple of functions to help us set up things like a SQLite connector and the payment processor. It doesn't really matter what these are exactly for this example, but they're there. And then we have some CRUD operations in particular on employees. So we have create employee, we have read all the employees, we have read a single employee given an ID, we have update an employee and we have delete an employee. And then we have a couple of extra methods that are useful for employees like paying the salary. That's kind of useful if you're an employee, right? And that's basically it. So it's a very simple HR system. And then each endpoint in the API has control functions that are defined in another file, employees.pi. So for example, this has a function that creates an employee and if something goes wrong, this will also raise an exception. Now, currently not all endpoints in this backend follow the fail fast principle. In particular, create employee, update employee and pay salary. So what is the fail fast principle? Well, there's two aspects to it. The first is that you should do early error detection. So catch problems, issues as soon as possible and then stop immediately. The second part of the principle is that the error messages that you should return should not be cryptic and generic. They should be specific so that you know what is actually wrong with what you did. The reason you want to fail fast is that you don't want failures to be hidden so that later on they're going to break other things. You can apply this principle to many different architecture, not just client server architectures, though it is quite common there because of its nature of returning data and handling requests that may return data that can harm the application. So what's failing fast is going to do is that it will ensure that the system is going to prevent localized errors from spreading and breaking other things in your application, which is exactly the example that I gave at the start of the video. Early problem detection is an example of what goes wrong in create employee, in particular related to this salary field here. So as you can see, we simply create the thing. There is no validation whatsoever. And that means you can input basically any type of value, including negative values. So this system allows employees to have a negative salary, which basically means that you have to pay to work here and nobody wants Wants that right and having negative salaries in the system can have lots of annoying complications like the payment processor crashing because it can handle negative numbers for example so instead of storing a negative salary and potentially crashing other systems later on you can add validation here to avoid the problem altogether fail fast and the same goes for updating an employee so also there you set a salary that you need to check that it's positive here you see an updated version of the code that actually has a validation check so if it's less than zero then we're going to raise an http exception what you also see is that the exception is precise so there is detail we explain what the problem is we say well this value is incorrect you need to provide a positive decimal value and we also supply a suitable status code, not something random like 418 or something. So how do you resolve this in common? Well, an important thing you can do is automated testing. When you build software, you have to ensure that these types of issues are caught early on. So you need to test your functions, your classes with the appropriate fixtures, test values to make sure that they don't break under certain conditions. And you can write those unit tests yourself. You can also use a library like Hypothesis to generate that kind of testing data for you. There's a lot of possibilities there, but testing is really important. There's several other pros to the fail fast principle. The first is that it can actually save you some money in that if you catch errors early in the execution, it means that any expensive operations that you need to perform, you don't need to do. So that's going to save on compute cost. A second pro is that failing fast means that you're more transparent to the users and not only the users, but also the developers. So if you see something is wrong, you have a specific error message, then it's also easier to find the problem when you want to fix it. And finally, it's more secure. It minimizes the risk of different DOS attacks. And by avoiding cascading failures in your system, you also avoid issues with data integrity, just to name a few things. Now, there's also a con to using the fail fast principle, which is that it may appear to your customer that your system is more fragile, more finicky. 
that it returns an error more quickly than other systems might do. Though this is actually a good thing because the system is more rigid and explicit, it also means that you reduce the chance of having issues with data integrity. And in the long term, that is going to provide a better experience for your customers. So a system that fails fast should catch problems, detect errors as fast as possible, and return a sensible message to the user. And this is gonna help you build software that's more robust and easier to debug. In this particular example, I used FastAPI to build my backend. If you want to learn more about how to build a backend with FastAPI, check out this video next. Thanks for watching and see you next time.